Can you imagine taking a test and not getting the results for 40 years? How tough is that? I mean, in high school, in college, you go take a test, the next thing you find out if you failed or passed, right? But parenting is the only test you take that you will not find out whether you did good or not for 40 years. Today, I was asked to share with you how I'm raising my kids. Whether this stuff's going to work or not, I'm not going to know for 40 years, but I'm going to share with you some of the methods I'm deciding to raise my kids, hoping they're going to be successful. All right, so let's get right into it. Look, parenting is like uh, public speaking. A lot of people in the world of sales, they're very good at from stage. Oh, I'm a very good public speaker, let's just say, right? And then some are good in groups of three to five or 10, like a smaller group talking to people, right? But the best leaders I know, they're the best at one-on-one and parenting is all one-on-one. Meaning you can sit there with your three kids and give them a pep talk collectively together, right? You can sit there and give them a spiel or preach something at them, right? But there's nothing more powerful to me in parenting than one-on-one. The best conversations I've ever had with my dad, nobody else was around. It was just he and I. The best conversation I'm willing to bet that you had with your mom or your dad were probably just you and them. When it comes down to raising kids, I read a book a long time time ago saying, thank God it's Monday, uh, uh, meaning I can't wait to get away from my family. The author, who is a therapist, said one of the best ways to save your marriage and parenting is to spend one-on-one time communicating with your individual kids and your spouse. Uh, I've taken the philosophy of talking to my kids one-on-one to see what's on their mind and address whatever issue they have. And if it's got to be something where you got to discipline them, if the level of discipline is higher, where you got to be really serious conversation with them, pull them aside to have that conversation with them one-on-one. They will appreciate it. At least I did. Balancing between competition and teamwork. And let me explain to you what I mean by this. A lot of people will say, parents will say, it is not good to raise your kids competitive. That's their philosophy. It's not mine. So I'll give you an example of what happened to us just last uh, Sunday. So we, every Sunday we bike with me and my kids and it's between eight to 12 miles we'll bike, right? Well, my nine-year-old and my seven-year-old will get on the bike and boom, we'll go out there and we'll bike. Typically I'll say, hey dad, if I win this first patch, I want to get slurpy when I come back. I want to be able to play 30 minutes more video games. I want to be able to do X, Y, Z. So great, no problem. So they'll compete against each other because it's friendly competition. They're around the same age. One of them is stronger, obviously, but it's still healthy competition. But on the way back, I said, here's what we're going to be doing today. He says, what's that? I said, today, I want to see both of you work together as a team to see if both of you together can beat me by working as a team and motivating each other. See if you can beat me. So I'm now on the bike pulling my daughter and she's in the back and we're going and they're in front of me. I'm not going to lie to you. I showed up and I'm in, I'm sweating so bad. My dad's like, what happened to you? I am drenched because they were willing to work collectively together to have a common enemy, which was who? Let's be daddy. And they did that day, by the way. I'm proud of them. If you see this one day, you were seven to nine years old when you beat daddy. But I, I, there's a balance of both. I don't mind, hey, let's see who's going to be able to do this lap faster. Okay, great. Now let's see how you guys can do it together. You know, so competition and teamwork. If I have to choose between the two, which one a little bit more than the other, I'm probably going to be 51% teamwork, 49% competition, but I'm driving both. Next one is something I do in our family a lot, and that is debate. I love debate. What I mean by debate is any topic that comes up, uh, uh, Patrick's reading the book, and I'll say, so do you think that was the right thing to do when they're doing this? I don't know if it's the right thing to do. Why do you think? I think this. I think that. Why not? What if they did this but that? Why would they do this? Well, because they did this. Is that a bad idea? Who said it's a bad idea? And we're constantly debating, and they'll be talking to each other. What do you think about it? What do you think about it? I think we should do this. Why do you think we should go to the movies? I think we need to go to the movies because of this. Why do you think we? Sh- I think we should play outside. Why should we play outside? Because if we play outside, we spend more time to get in the movies. It's quiet, and we're just sitting there together. And we're all quiet for like five seconds. Okay, then let's go play outside, right? But it's the muscle of debating because their brain is learning how to reason by constantly challenge each other's mind. And you'd be amazed at what age kids can debate. It's very, very early. And uh, I think it's something that strengthens their mind to be able to help help make better decisions as they age. Next one is, uh, you know, teaching them independence rather than doing everything for them. Like a lot of times, you know, a grandma or grandfather or father or mother, sometimes parents want to do everything for their kids. Oh, poblecito, I want to do everything for you. It's okay. I got this for you. It's okay. I got that for you. It's okay. It's okay. No, it's, it's allowing these kids to have to figure out their problems. Like, let's just say they're going through something and one of my kids will come up to me and there's a bully situation going on. I would say, so, then what do you think about what happened that day? You were there. I think you should have done this. Okay, what, what, what do you think? 
Yeah, but, but here's what was going on. How do you think you guys could have solved that together? We would have been able to do it this way. Okay, can you guys do it or do you need my help? No, daddy, let us do it first. Let us do it first. We got it, daddy, let us do it first. Let us do it first. We got this, daddy. I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Let us do it first. You're teaching an element of independence because long term, you and I got 18 years to teach these kids to be 18 independent. One day, leave you one day. If you don't teach them independent, they're going to be having a very hard time in this life because this place is not the friendliest place today, especially today. They have to learn how to be independent, be strong at the same time, and know how to make the right decisions and avoid the wrong decisions. God knows they're going to make some wrong decisions. You got to give them a little bit of leeway. But uh, the more you allow them to make the decisions, eventually their decision-making machine will get better. Use because I said so very rarely, meaning use that as something in your pocket to use once in a while. Because I said so every day, the other day I went to a church and uh, this one lady is next to me and her son has not listened to her. He's like, you know what? I'm just going to go give him a weapon because he's going to listen to me. And she just went and bam, gave her weapon. The son cried and all that. Because I said so. Because I said so. I've said because I said so. But I use that card very rarely and I keep it here. So you can use it anytime as a parent. It's your card. You own it. You can say because I said so. But there are, are, there are alternatives to because I said so. I was one time talking to uh, a, a gentleman who talked about Reagan. And I don't know who this person was that I interviewed. It could have been a, a Larry Arn, but he explained Reagan as the great explainer. He said the reason why American voters liked Reagan because he explained things so well. Sometimes as parents, we don't explain enough. We don't say, here's what I want you to do. Go do it. No. Here's what I want you to do. Here's why. If you don't add the why, you're a dictator. You don't want to be a dictator all the time. I understand sometimes as a family, as a parent, you have to put your foot down and make the decision and call the shots and move with it. But try to become a better explainer to your kids where you're teaching them how to reason by you reasoning with them. Eventually, it'll create a better relationship with them. Choose the right movies to watch with your kids. I'm a big movie guy myself, and I love choosing the right movies to watch with them. So we have this game that we, t we, we take turns. Every time he has a movie, then he has a movie, then she has a movie, then it's my turn. Every time it comes to me to pick a movie, my movies have lessons behind them. So then it's like, oh my gosh, here we go. They start off not liking the movie. At the end, guess what? They end up loving the movie. Every single time I pick a movie, no, I don't want to watch Remember the Titans. Please, Daddy. Wow, Daddy, I love this movie. I don't want to watch Walk the Line, Johnny Cash. Why is this a two and a half hour movie? And then they say, wow, it makes sense. So Johnny Cash, Walk the Line, phenomenal movie. I watched with the kids a couple weeks ago. And there's a couple parts in that movie. One is uh, that the movie teaches you about drugs, teaches about the wrong friends, teaches you about a, a father that's abusive and alcoholic and the power of what alcohol does to ruin families. It, it teaches you so many different things. Where, you know, persistence, if you love somebody, persistence, hey, June, marry me, June, marry me, June, marry me, June, and patience and family working together and brother, you know, the brother left and the other brother was left by himself and the accident that happens to Johnny Cash's brother felt, oh, God, I can't believe that you guys got to work together as a team, never leave your buddy alone. There's so many messages to it. Remember the Titans. Daddy, what's the big deal if whites get on one, one bus and blacks? I said, it's not a big deal. We all have to work together. We're brown. We're Iran. You're Middle Eastern and you're white. What are you talking about? We're not black. We're not white. We're brown. We're, we're confused. You got a white mom who married a Middle Eastern dad. So we're like a little bit of everything. Okay. So but, but why is it such a, it's not a big deal. Why? Look how they work together. Look what happened. Look what happened when he got injured. They still have to come back. You still have to win. You still have to figure out a way to do it for the right people. Oh my, this is such a great guy. I love this story. So choose the right movies. I have a list of movies that I go through with my kids. It's a long list of movies that I'm going through with my kids. I'm on like movie number 10 right now, but each of them have a lesson. Make a list of movies with the right lessons to teach them and start watching a movie and pause. Here's what happened here. What do you think about what happened here? What are, your th what are your thoughts about? What do you think about what just happened right here? Well, why did this happen? Process it with them. So yes, make a list of movies and watch it with them while processing it with them. All your kids are gonna be different. I was different, my sister's different, my kids are different, they're all different. It's very weird how different they are. And sometimes you, if you have three kids, you're typically gonna have one that's gonna be very reasonable. Meaning one kid that you have very easy time doing business with. Everything is so easy with this kid. Just, Teachers love them, school loves them, friends love them, everybody loves them. It's just a breath of fresher to deal with this kid. You're going to have another kid that's going to be able to get away with stuff. Like, oh, this person, they know how to kind of get away with things. Oh, look at this, the way she does this or he does this. Look at this. They're very good and you kind of like, I know what you're doing, 
but they get away with it anyway because they're charming. Like you have that one seducer, right? And then you're going to have a kid that's going to be very difficult, right? One of the worst things you will ever do with kids is compare them constantly. Why can't you be like this person? I hate it here. Why can't you be like that friend? Why can't you be like this? I'm like, dude, I am not like everybody. I'm very different than everybody. So the first time one of my kids had experienced that in school and he came back and said, they call me weird. They call me different. They call me this. Um, I said, my entire life, your dad's, dad's, been, dad's been called weird. So, and we had that conversation together. So, you know, try to do your best. Like in the game of business, leading salespeople, leading people, period, you're always going to have someone that's going to be your best producer that's easy to work with. But you're also going to have some people that are not. You got to figure out a way to lead people regardless of their personalities and do your best to adjust to lead that kid, not the same way that you lead this kid and that kid because they're all gonna have different personalities and different motivators. Create a currency in your house. And what I mean by currency in your house is uh, what is valuable for them to get in return from you what they want. So some homes it's, you gotta clean the house, you gotta clean this, you gotta clean that, you gotta clean this. You're essentially teaching your kids to be cleaners, right? Which is fine, but you're teaching them to do that. I want to incentivize, like to me chores are things you're supposed to do, right? You don't get currency on chores. There is no currency on collect your Lego, clean it up on. Can I get $5 for cleaning this? No. That's what you're supposed to do. I don't want them to think you get paid $5 for cleaning the floor because later on they're adults cleaning the floor because when they were seven years old, daddy paid the money. I'm not doing that. We're not doing that. That's a chore. Let's go clean it up, right? You go read a book. Okay. You finish a book. How many pages you read? 20. Perfect. 20 points. That's your currency. If you want to get a video game, it's 400 points. Great, that's 400 pages. Oh, let me go read 400 pages. It's a method of currency. Exercise, currency. Reading the book, currency. Whatever it is, the, whatever currency you decide as a family, husband and wife, or you're by yourself, whatever currency you decide, your kids are going to like it more if they have a set of clear expectation of what to do to get XYZ. One kid's going to want to go to Disneyland for a day. Phenomenal. Create the currency. He's got to read 20 books, 80 books, 40 books. I don't care what it is, but they have to do something. Once that set of clarity is there, you'd be amazed how much more your kids will perform because it's very predictable currency that's being used in your house instead of one day it's this, one day it's this, one day it's this, one day it's this. And eventually they're like, ah, mom, I'm done. I don't care. Do whatever you want to do. They won't take you seriously. Create a very consistent currency for everybody. Ask your kids for their opinions. I ask it from a very early age. It doesn't matter what it is. So how was the food? What did you think about the food? I thought it was okay. What did you think about the service here? I thought it was good. What do you think about basketball versus football? I don't know. I think about this. You know, uh, uh, mommy uh, is, uh, you know, going through cooking something. What should I cook? What do you think we should cook? What do you think mommy should put together for us? Let's go eat at a restaurant. What do you guys want to go eat? How about we go here? Huh? Okay. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? The what do you think is constant. That m- imagine if your brain is a muscle. Like, what do you think? What do you think? You're what? developing this muscle to think. What do you think, Right. I probably, if you were to ask the people that work around me nonstop, my board, my employees, my executives, my directors, my staff, my family, my wife, my friends, everybody, they would tell you, Pat asks us, what do you think all the damn time? I'm always asking, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Because I want to hear what you're thinking, then we process it together, and it's a method of building leaders of the people that are around you. So this next one, I almost have to explain it to you, and here's what I mean by it. So as a parent, say we got a, a, a barometer here, right? On this side, you're a bad parent. On this side, you're a great parent. Both of them have a problem. There's consequences for both of them, right? If you're a bad parent, your kids are going to be what? Either they're going to say, I never want to be like mommy when I grow up. I never want to be like daddy when I grow up. Or they're going to be just like you. You're just like you, right? That's why they say generational curses. Like, hey, what can you do to stop gender? If you're somebody that's always drinking every night, your kids see you drinking every single night. You're fighting with your wife. You're fighting like that. That's a bad example if they have to see it every single day, right? You're away, constantly leaving, constantly fights, constantly bickering, not taking care of yourself, lazy, no money, mom and dad always fighting. There's always issues because one's not working hard. That, and you know who you are if it's great or bad, right? You may say I'm a good example. You may say you're a great example. Great example is you're winning at the highest level where your problem is you're creating a shadow. So here's here you got it, different issues. Let me tell you the issues here. If you're somebody that is a great example, you're winning at the highest level in career and life, well, you have two issues. One of them is you have unnecessary shadows that you're creating, unnecessary expectation that you're creating, right? The other one is what? When you do so much and you win, a lot of times parents 
who worked so hard to win at the highest level, they're afraid to have their kids pay the same price. So they, help, they raise soft kids. So weird. Sometimes parents who work very hard to win at the highest level, they end up raising soft kids because they make the kid's life so much easier and they take that opportunity away of the kid also fighting for it. So take this barometer. If you're a bad parent and you didn't necessarily set the best example, let's just say, and you're like, I didn't do that well. You're trying to do your best, but it wasn't the best example. You got to inject belief constantly. You got to let them know you can be better than daddy. You can do great things. You can go out there and do good. Why don't you be the leader? Why don't you, you can do that. And then you have to work on your example because at any point you can go from bad to okay, to good, to great. You need to maybe work on being a better example as a parent. As parents, you know, we're, we're flawed human beings. We have a lot of issues. We have a lot of vices. We have our own set of challenges. Some is alcohol, some it's gambling, some it's bad money issues, some it's health, some it's argument with, some it's words, some it's, you know, we have so many issues ourselves because we are also trying to figure ourselves out in this life without a manual, right? We're trying to figure out this life manual that we have. So you have to work on going over here and you got to inject a lot of belief. If you're somebody that's winning at the highest level, don't compare your kids to you. Don't create unnecessary expectation for them that they don't necessarily need. And don't let others do it. Like, let's just say if a friend of yours comes and says, well, you're going to be the good, you know, you got a great daddy. Let's see if he can do what he did. No, no, stop him. Right. I'm, so, I'm sorry. He's not his daddy. He's his own man. He's his own kid. You know, we're going to see what he's going to be doing. What I like about him is he likes this. Right in front of there, you got to nip it in the butt because or else other people think they can say that kind of stuff to your kid and it creates a division between you and your kid. So for me, my suggestion for you would be self-deprecation. Spend a lot of time deprecating yourself. Let me tell you about the mistakes daddy made. Let me tell you about the mistakes mommy made. Don't spend too much time talking about the things you did right. If you talk 20% of the time about things you did right, 80% of the time talk about the things you did wrong not right, because that brings the pressure a little bit lower for them to perform better. Just like in golf, you don't scare the hell out of somebody right before they hit a shot. You got to figure out a way to teach them how to come here so they hit the ball better, right? You're trying to get your kids to come here so they make better decisions. If it's constant shadow, you know, unfair expectations of trying to be like you, these kids are going to eventually resent you and there'll be a 5, 10, 15 year period of them wanting to be away from you because it's constantly being compared to mommy or daddy, and it's flat out unfair to do so. So if you got a lot of value from today's video, I got two other videos I want you to be thinking about. One of the videos is 15 types of parents to find out which one you are and which one you were raised by. If you've not watched this, click over here. And the other one is 15 things to know before you date an entrepreneur. Meaning if you're an entrepreneur, you're about to date somebody, maybe they ought to watch this video. And if you're somebody that's about to date an entrepreneur, it's probably a good idea you know how they're wired because they're not like everybody else. Having said that, if you enjoyed today's episode, click that subscribe button. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.